Welcome to another episode of Property Particulars for the LA Property Podcast. Today I have a very special guest who I know very well, <laughs> Andrew Slatter. Welcome. Thank you, Doug. Andrew, you and I have known each other a long time, about 12 years. It, it is 12 years now. But please, let's, ex- let's start with you explaining who you are in our team here now, uh, LA, and a bit of our history Okay, I, um, I've been doing property work for 30 years, the last 12 of them with you, Doug. Um, I've always done a load of sort of higher value residential conveyancing in central London, combined with lease extension work, um, which has always worked well because the two things go hand in hand, lease extensions and the conveyancing, they crop up at the same time, so that's worked well. Um, Recently, I've sort of withdrawn a bit more from the conveyancing side, uh, basically, so that the, so that the younger members of the team can get cracking on the work that I'm bringing in on the conveyancing side, and I'm supporting them on that, rather than doing the sort of frontline conveyancing work myself, um, but still doing the lease extension work and supporting them when the lease extension work crops up. So it's a tidy team, and um, we seem to be doing really well, increasing our market share mm. on all fronts. Um, I think the secret is really just the sort of seamlessness of the service that we're providing to clients. The last thing clients want when they buy a property and find out that the lease needs extending is to be sort of catapulted to another firm or to another department. Um, They just want to know that it's going to be taken care of and it's not a problem. And it isn't a problem if it's properly dealt with. So that's what I'm doing. Uh, A lot of supervision and a lot of lease extension and enfranchisement work within our our team. Yeah, and we're quite unusual, I think, in the fact that there's you, me, and John, because we're now on our third law firm together, yeah. which is like, it probably doesn't happen that often. Yeah, it's sort of, it's a good thing. Yeah, I think it's it is. It's a very good thing. Yeah, I mean, we, we enjoy working with each other. We do. Otherwise, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be on our third law firm exactly. together. Exactly, yeah. And um, between us, I mean, you know, you're, you've got your amazing workflow from sort of West London agents. John's got his workflow as well yeah. from his agents. I've got the sort of cent- good agents tied up in central London with all, all the lease extension stuff across the piece. And it's um, it's just a really good offering. It really sort of yeah. works works well. And we uh, joke a bit that you are the oracle. Um, but actually, we uh, use you so much in our team for like any... <laughs> tricky legal property question not just lease extensions which we'll come on to in a minute um like you have a good knowledge you might not admit it but we we you do and you help us out a lot across the team as well well it's nice to hear you say that doug yeah well um yeah. oracle probably not <laughs> um but 30 year old 30 years in the business yes and i mean the fact is it's, i mean it's not it's not clever it's just 30 years in the business and after that amount of time there are most situations that are new to team members mm-hmm. uh, and that might be freaking someone out, um, most situations that I've come across before, yeah. you know where it, it's We're just accumulative. It's, it's experience. It's, most oracles are experienced. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And actually, you know, when something might be stressing one of the younger people in the team or junior solicitors or assistants or whatever, uh, quite often we, we're not phased by it because we have, you're right, we've dealt with it exactly. before. Yeah. Um, uh, so we've got that experience to deal with a lot of things. That's right. And it's, it's, it's you know, I, I'm aware sometimes that problems have sort of floated up through the team and, you know, it just needs to get to someone who's sort of been, been there before and done it. And, and we work, uh, so we're, we are one team, but of course, like you've just said there, like you've kind of now focusing a bit more, well, just on the lease extension and franchisement, et cetera, and you're kind of uh, giving some of your great quality conveyancing work across to others in the team. Um, but we still, so it kind of means that we work together on transactions a little bit. So yep. I'll get a job coming in, and then there's a lease extension element element to it. And the first question I'll get asked, because sometimes it's even on uh, the memorandum of sale that it says, and it's like, 
when do we need to extend a, a lease, a, a flat lease? Yeah. When, when do we do it? At what process in the transaction? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, I think people out there in the market who are not dealing with law and lease extensions and converting all the time, when you hear that a flat has got an 85 year lease or a 90 year lease, um, it's as brutal as that. It's 85 years left, 90 mm -hmm. years left. And at the end of that 85 years, or 90 years, whatever, however long it is left, there is nothing left. It dwindles down to nothing. So for most people, it's going to be pretty obvious that as that lease gets shorter, it's going to get less valuable. But what people don't understand always is that that devaluation itself is accelerating year on year on year. So the damage is getting worse and worse every year. Now that's not to say that a lease that's you know, 85 years long this year um, is going to be worth less next year because it's 84 years long because the underlying market is buoying things up and disguising the devaluation. But devaluation there is all the time as a lease gets shorter. And so it needs to be extended. Um, and the sooner the better because, as I've just said, as it devalues, it devalues quicker and quicker and quicker. There's that accelerating factor, which is the rot that has to be stopped, and it can be stopped. Um, that's the beauty of the lease extension legislation, which came into being 30 years ago, at about the same time that I came into being <laughs> as, a, as a lawyer and started dealing with it. And it's been a, you know, a rich seam of work and a rich seam of uh, uh, of solution, if you like, for leaseholders, because until before that time, there was nothing that a leaseholder, uh -huh. leaseholder could do. You could go to your landlord and say, my lease is getting short, I'm worried about it, can I extend my lease? And the landlord could sit there and just say, no. They could, the landlord could watch leaseholders squirm mm -hmm. as their leases devalued and devalued and devalued. So government stood or stepped into that situation and said we are now going to bring about a situation in which leaseholders can force a landlord not to just extend the lease but to sell an extension of the lease and that's what we've been dealing with ever since and successive governments governments have made it easier uh, to qualify to do that and the situation at the moment is simply that as long as you've had or as, as long as you've been registered as owner of a, a lease which was more than 21 years when it was originally granted, um, you have the right, the legal right, to go to your landlord and require the landlord to grant you a 90-year extension. Um, yeah. And the ground rent is reduced to a peppercorn sure. at the same time. So that's then, a very important right, yeah. because otherwise the, 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 the leaseholder is just uh, high and dry with a, with a uh, depreciating asset. Mm -hmm. It gives the leaseholder the right to stop the rot, ring fence the value of their remaining lease, and effectively reinvest in the property by adding 90 years on or paying for another 90 years. Um, and that's important because you're reinvesting in the property um, at a protected rate. Because yeah. if the price isn't agreed with the landlord, or if the landlord is unreasonable, in the negotiations, you've got recourse to a tribunal. Yeah, sure. And the tribunal will make sure that there's a reasonable price paid. Previously, the landlord could just dig in and uh, and say, no, yeah. not talking. Now, with, with the legislation that we all use all day, every day now, uh, a, a tenant or a le lessee can force the landlord to be reasonable. Yeah. And on practical terms, let's yeah. take it to this stage. So I think on the ones that you and I or our team do with you, for me more often, it's not existing clients that have owned property for a long period of time. Sometimes that does happen, of course, mm. but it's normally as part of the buying process. So quite often it's actually buy, buyers coming in and they're extending it as they purchase. Exactly. So then there's yeah. a slight yeah. difference because you have to have the seller involved as well. Yeah. And how does that process work? Well, it's... On paper, it's pretty straightforward. The seller simply, uh, uh, it, it will be the seller who qualifies to extend the lease because it's the seller who's owned the lease for two years. Um, and so the seller will initiate the process by signing and serving the notice on the landlord. 
And then on completion of the sale of the flat, the seller transfers not only the flat lease, but also the benefit of the lease extension claim. And the buyer then takes that forward into the sunset and gets the extended lease. Yeah. So in that process, I mean, the, the mechanics of that are pretty straightforward and there's properly dealt with. There's nothing that can go wrong. Yeah. What's important is that the buyer knows what he's getting himself into um, in terms of the ultimate price for the lease extension. So we can source and ex uh, source the correct valuation advice so that the, that the buyer knows or has a ballpark idea of the likely price that's coming down the track for the 90 year oh, wow. extension. Yeah. And it's important, I mean, again, it's uh, acting for buyers, we will always say to them, look, you know, before actually, ideally, before you even agree the price for the existing flat lease, mm -hmm. you really need to have an idea of what you're going to be paying for the extension. Because if you then get a nasty surprise down the line, before we've exchanged contracts, we're going to have a situation where you go back to the seller and say, look, I've agreed to buy your existing lease for X. I've found out that I've got to pay this amount for the lease extension. I'm afraid I'm going to have to re reduce the offer. And that's a bad feeling all round. So yeah. the more information for buyer and seller at the outset, the better. Yeah. So there are no surprises for anyone and everyone gets off on the right foot. Yeah, but and that works quite well so with all of the agents that we deal with and we know really well. Yeah. They do come to us, don't they, yeah. for advice when they get sellers onboarding yeah. to sell their property yeah. and because they do a little health check, obviously, of the lease length. And quite often we do get inquiries at that stage mm. via agents or sellers, like, should I extend now or should we wait? Um, so we kind of do it from both angles. Sometimes, yeah, don't we? and I, you know, I spend quite a bit of time with agents at their offices doing talks to their sales negotiators, just really sort of putting them in the picture about what they need to know at their level of the transaction about lease extensions, because they can they can head off a lot of aggravation at that level, and the more they know more agents know about the lease extension procedure that's coming down the track, mm -hmm. you know, the more they uh, they can put together more sort of robust deals. And also, it's good for them, because if they can talk the talk on all of this with all of their applicants and with all of their uh, clients, uh, th you know, they're going to do better um, yeah. in, in, in the market than the agency down the road who gets a short lease in and just doesn't, doesn't really know what to do with it, what it means, how to sell it, who to talk to. Yeah, exactly. And we're, we're all, always available to talk at that, at that level. I mean, we love to pimp you out to the estate agents. That's so kind of you. So don't. I am sure we will get some inquiries <laughs> following this episode to see if you'll go and do some more talks. Mm. But um, please recommend me rather yes, than pimp me. Yes, I will, yeah, of course. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> um, and so moving on a bit, there is this whole new legislation going yeah. to come mm. this year, which we're, which on our side of the property transactions, uh, we're still learning about it. Obviously, you know a lot about it. Um, but I'm already starting to get the questions like, should I wait? Yeah. When, when, when is this law, come, when are the changes happening? What should I do? Yeah. So wh what's the best advice now at, that, at this stage? Well, the, the legislation has been a long time coming, years and years. Um, the government has been talking about this for a long time, making it easier and cheaper for uh, lessees to extend their leases. And the legislation is now actually going through Parliament as we, as we speak. Um, At time of recording. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Um, three major sort of points are, are going to make it easier and cheaper, potentially, for leaseholders. Number one, you remember I mentioned about the two-year ownership requirement. That is apparently going to go so that you do not have to have owned the lease for two years in order to force an extension of it. Mm -hmm. That's good news. It's kind of good news in a way, but not in, in another. It, it means that, that investors can come in and buy up short leases um, and extend them mm -hmm. without having owned them for two years. The whole business of the two-year ownership rule was to discourage investors snapping up short leases mm -hmm. and making a business of this uh, enterprise. Um, but they're, they're, assuming the new law goes through and that two-year rule disappears, investors, rather than owner-occupiers, will be able to sort of buy up short leases and e extend them without having done the two-year rule. 
or satisfied the two-year rule. Um, so there's that. The other thing is more significant, I think, which is that the government are saying that the statutory extension that leaseholders are entitled to at the moment, which is 90 years, is going to go up to 990 years. Mm -hmm. So when you apply to your landlord for a new long lease, it's not with a 90-year extension, it's with a 990-year extension. So the government really means business in terms of making sure that the leasehold you know, the, the problem of short leases is gradually sort of extinguished as, yes. as time goes on. Mm -hmm. People might think that a 990-year lease is going to be so much more expensive to buy or to, that sort of extension is going to be so much more expensive than a 90-year extension. It isn't okay. uh, because the vast, vast majority of the value of a lease extension is scrunched up into the first 50 to 90 years, which is what you you're paying for anyway so the additional 900 years although it sounds odd to people you know is 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 going to put a few hundred pounds on yeah. the premium so no worries about valuation and people might say well what's the difference then if it, you know the answer is i think it just looks nicer i mean if I, if I had a flat and i was being asked if if if, if I wanted a 90-year extension or a 990-year extension, which in people's minds equates to sort of a virtual freehold yes. valuation, I'd, why not go for the 990? And I think my sense is that there's a bit of a logjam in the system at the moment where people are waiting till the new law comes through so that they can apply for a 990-year extension okay. rather than 90. Third thing, very briefly, is uh, on valuation where leases have dropped below 80 years. So only in terms of leases which have short, become short to that extent, sub 80 years, we've got a situation there at the moment where an additional payment is due to the landlord, uh, namely 50% of the marriage value. Won't go into that, the technicalities of that, but suffice to say, when a lease dips below 80 years, it becomes a whole lot more expensive to extend it. Yeah. The government have promised to do something about that and abolish that additional sort of charge that arises. No one quite knows how they're going to do that because what they're taking away from the land, or what they're giving to the tenants is coming from somewhere and it's coming from the landlords. Okay. And the landlords, particularly the central London landlords, the big professional landlords, if you like, are not happy about that uh, because they are really being divested of a large value element of their estates. So that is being debated and uh, is a difficult question. I don't know how where, where it's going to end up, but let's hope that the new law goes through quickly, if only to remove the two-year ownership rule and extend the right to sort of 990 year leases. Yeah, so we're, like we're, we're in an exciting time about it, really. This, yeah. this, year, this forthcoming year, yeah. You could be very busy. Absolutely. Yeah, um, so. And a couple of our team are now helping you and learning about it as well from you. Yep. Um, I managed to avoid always doing lease extensions when we were at our previous firms with you, uh, which I'm glad of. I'll stick to my side. You can stick to your side. So uh, thank you for that bit. And I'm sure we'll get some inquiries, see if we can get you out get a few more talks in to yeah, chat definitely. to people about always, it. Yeah, definitely. Always happy to do that. Yeah. Um, so switch completely. Little little question to round up. Yeah. What would be your dream property, Andrew? Anywhere in the world, personal property or location? My, my dream property actually exists. Yeah. And it's a property that I came across many years ago uh, and it's in the Docklands. And it's a wonderful penthouse property on top of a building called New Concordia Wharf. Right. Um, which was an old grain warehouse, uh, which was bought by a f friend of mine at the time. A uh, young guy did really well and saw the value of this amazing warehouse uh, on the south bank of the River Thames in Bermondsey. Amazing. Uh, and he bought that building and developed it into loft apartments and there was one huge water tower on the top of it wow. um, which he developed into a penthouse for himself um, and it was on f I think it was on four or five floors 
completely latched. It's, it's like a sort of a, a house hoisted up eight floors above the River Thames with amazing wow. view, and it really is a stunning property. And I, th I, I think it's 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 one of the most inventive, uh, beautifully, lo you know, located mm. properties in London. Wow. Well, yeah. maybe, maybe you'll get it one time. <laughs> I don't think so, Doug. Unfortunately, <laughs> on, on retirement. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it, it's it is a, it, the answer to your question. If, if if there's a dream property that I could live in, I would go there tomorrow. I love it. I'm gonna have. A, I'm gonna try and find it and walk past it. Yeah. Andrew, thank you so much for joining us on this episode. And we'll my, catch up soon. My pleasure, Doug. Look forward to that. Thank you for joining us and join us again soon on another episode. And please also look out for us on our socials uh, on Instagram at Lester Aldridge Property.